like a fool, Kitty. <laughs> this is a serious thing, Kitty. Oh, this is a serious thing. Do you realize what you're doing to that man? Mm. Do you care? Do I care? Do I care? <laughs> you... You... Shoot! <laughs> What do you want him for? What do you want him for? The man has a wife. The man has a home. What do you want him for? What do you want him for? You speak to me with respect. You speak to me with respect. Don't kid me. Don't tell me there's nothing here. We're all big names. And Danny Froken was a, an extremely beloved character. I'm the sweet little villain who thank you, Kat, was breaking up Ray Pressfield's happy home in a most unlady love way. Oh, Chuck. That's as bad as reading other people's mail. Oh, come on. Doc, are you sure of that? Uh, Oh, don't kid Not me. before I do the autopsy, but I'm pretty sure. Charlie, 
May I take this? I'm going to be finished in five minutes. Doc, I tell you what, if you let me take it now, I'll bring it right back. Just a second. Charlie, because of the play. This broken business can break me and the play. Now, you just do what you should do, that's all. Do what you should do. Listen, Charlie, I don't have to... I want you to see something. What? Better come outside in the hall. What? You've got the sleeping beauty conscious. Now you can question him any time. I'm still waiting for the district attorney. Mr. Pressfield doesn't know anything. He was passed out cold. Go back inside and get a statement on him if he makes any sense at all. I don't have to tell you to keep him isolated from the woman. Yes, sir. Hey, Lieutenant, what do you say? Hey, sir, come on, get involved here, Lieutenant. Hey, is it true that Chris tried to kill Kenny Lampton and tried to kill himself? Clear this hallway. You know better than to come up here. If you want to wait, wait downstairs. Oh, come on, Captain Bly. Lieutenant Bly is good enough for me. Now, get lost. Mike, there's a doc's medical report. Look at this. Mm-hmm. In other words, if what the doc says is correct, there's heart failure involved, plus a broken neck. We don't know which cause which. That's right. Did he fall down the stairs and break his neck because he had a heart attack? Or did he have a heart attack because he fell down the stairs? Or did he fall or was he pushed? And if so, by whom? Too bad there isn't a butler. Mr. Smith, this is the doctor's medical report. The next time I fill out a form for you guys in the middle of the night, I'm going to find myself an all-night lunch counter and do it over a cup of coffee. The lieutenant's expecting you. I'm sorry I looked the way I do. I didn't want to take the time to shave. This is Assistant District Attorney Smith, Mr. Pliss. How do you do? Well, pleased to meet you. Sit down. Now, are you ready to tell us your story? Yes, sir. You understand, of course, that this is all being recorded? Proceed. State your name. Cappy. Cappy Fleers. Address? 1273 Park Avenue. State your occupation. I'm a chauffeur. Presently employed? I work for a family named Pressfield. I've worked for them for the past six, seven years. Same address? 1273 Park Avenue. Put this down. At 1.03 a.m. this date, a person giving his name as Cappy Flares informed the precinct by telephone that a murder had been committed on the premises at 1894 West Day Lane. Now, do you identify yourself as the person who made this call I just described? He does. I'll tell your story. I got a call from Miss Lamson. She said Mr. Pressfield was with her at her apartment. She wanted me to come and get him. I called Mr. Froken. The full name is Daniel Irving Froken. Mr. Froken is the name of the man who you say was murdered? Yes, sir. Why did you call Mr. Froken? Well, this woman called me to come and get Mr. Pressfield. And I don't work for her. I don't know whether Mr. Pressfield wants me to take her orders or not. I asked to speak to Mr. Pressfield. She said he was too drunk. So I called Mr. Froken to ask him what to do. Why Mr. Froken? He's Mr. He was Mr. Pressfield's agent. I couldn't wake Mrs. Pressfield and ask her. Could I? Mr. Froken told me to come pick him up and he would go with me. We went to Miss Lamson's apartment. We rang the doorbell for a long time before she opened the door. When we went in, there was Mr. Pressfield. He was pretty drunk, trying to dance. Then he passed out. I went downstairs to him. 
Mr. Falcon told Miss Lamson she ought to be ashamed of herself. She got mad and pushed him down the stairs. That's it. I have here an approximate floor plan of Miss Lamson's apartment. Now, I want you to come over here with me. And I want you to mark here where you were, where Mr. Pressfield was, where Mr. Proken was, and where Miss Lampson was. This is the door, and that's the stairs. This door. Right. I was standing about here. Cold in here. Can't the city afford to heat these places? Miss Lampson, I have to advise you, you've just been accused of murder. There's been no formal charges set as yet. You're entitled to counsel. No one may compel you to answer any questions. But you intend to ask questions? I'd like to, yes. Aside from dear dead Mr. Frogan, there were three people in that room tonight. Me, Ray, and Ray Schofer. Mr. Schofer does not work for me. Mr. Schofer works for that gentleman who was non-compass. Are you accusing Mr. Pressfield? Mr. Schofer does not work for me. Are you accusing the Schofer of being in a conspiracy with Mr. Pressfield? Miss Lampson, do you want to make this official? Shall I send for a stenographer? I'm waiting for my lawyer. Miss Lampson. I'm waiting for my lawyer. When I looked up, Mr. Froken was standing here. She's waiting for a lawyer. That's her privilege. What was your impression of her? It's pretty hostile, Mike. Pretty good temper, too. I think she's capable of pushing Froken or anybody else who got her mad. Particularly if she were drunk. Oh, drunk or sober. You know, now she's trying to imply that because Fleers works for Pressfield, that maybe she's the victim of a conspiracy to protect Pressfield. Yes, I thought of that. He doesn't remember anything, he doesn't know anything. And he's got a hangover. Okay, Smitty, let's go. All right, Mr. Flares. Let's do it once more. I'm telling you the truth, Lieutenant. If you are, the woman in the next room is going to be tried for murder. <laughs> What do you want us to tell your fans? Get it. Press you and want you to marry. Get him. God bless you. God bless you. Get it. We can't have the Miss Sewer earlier. There's still photographer is still. Wait, darling. You wait. Listen, Kitty. Kitty, I have to talk to you. Oh, Gerald. Are you sure I can't get fired out of the play on the act of God for us? No, I mean I really have to talk to you. Oh, Gerald, we'll talk. We'll talk and talk. Kitty. Kitty. Stay away from Pressfield. <laughs> the question is, can Pressfield stay away from me? You killed Frogan because he insulted Kitty Lance. No comment, right, General. You're my favorite. Are you going to get a divorce? Hey, you and Kitty are going to Mexico. How about it? Well, you decided to leave me alone. Let me know. I have something to say. Don't turn your back on your friends, Mr. Pressfield. Thank you. All right, now. That will be all. Thank you. Sorry.
Mr. Pressfield? You sure you want to go to the steam baths instead of going home? Yes, sir. What do you think about me? I think you're a fool, Mr. Pressfield. All right, Cappy, let's go home. through the kitchen if you wanted to. Where is she? Right here, Kat. How did she find out? The papers called and called. I took the phone off the hook. These three been coming up together three times in a row. The juggler, the hanged man, and the house of God next to each other three times in a row. That's not good. Maybe you ought to try to get some sleep yourself. Kathy? Is it all true? Mr. Froken is dead. That's true. I don't know what else there is to be true or not. Guess what bothers me so much, I think, is that I feel like such a fool. If anybody had asked me if there were another woman, I'd have said no. I told you I was born in West Virginia. Yes? We had a house. High up on the side of Smoke Hill Valley. Just an old house. After my mother died, it was lonely. After my father was killed, it was empty and dead. So I burned it. And then I left. 
I burn my sorrow along with it. That's what you've got to do, Mrs. Pressfield. Burn your sorrow. That's all there is of me just now, Kathy. The sorrow is all there is to me. If I burn that, the same fire consumes me. It would be very kind of you if you would get me a cup of coffee. Nothing cancels out anything. If Pressfield is lying, that doesn't say that Flares is telling the truth. If Flares is lying, that doesn't say that Miss Lampson is telling the truth. Nothing cancels out. Well, you got two people that say that Pressfield was out cold. Pressfield says he was out, and the chauffeur backs him up on it. Lampson says they're lying. Well, that's two against one. We've got three people with a motive for lying. That's what we've got. I'll tell you something we have got. Nobody denies that Froken was pushed. You're right, Adam. They don't conflict about what has been done. They just conflict about who did it. How about that? Also, Mike, add this to the picture. The report of murder came from Fleers, and that was his statement from the very beginning. The Lamson woman didn't take a position implicating Pressfield or Fleers until after she herself was accused. May I? Go ahead. The district attorney there now? This is uh, Chuck Smith. Les, on the Daniel Froken death, I'm convinced we ought to take it to the grand jury. I want to move for an indictment of the Lampson woman on a murder, too. she's with? No. I'm... Her two ex-husbands. Both of them? Mm-hmm. She's about to have another ex-husband. She moved out on her new one last week. Actress. Thank you. I'll just have a gooeyest piece of chocolate cake you have and a large glass of milk. Well, let me have a fried egg sandwich on white bread and some coffee, please. Of the gooeyest chocolate cake. That's about um, 8,000 calories, huh? Well, not all actresses are skinny, you know. Lillian Russell weighed 146 pounds. I'm, I'm sorry, baby. Well, you want to know about actresses, right? Well, that's an actress, Amy Kidner. She, she was in Firelight Song last year. I'm sure you'll be interested. Honey, all I'm really interested in is learning about Kitty Lampson and Ray Pressfield. Firelight saw her into rehearsal with Amy Kittner playing the lead. She wouldn't do it, you see, unless Jack Allister, who was supposed to be her leading man, was dropped. Well, the producer agreed, but then Jack Allister went to the producer's wife, of course, they'd been running around together, and, and the producer's wife went to the producer and said that she'd leave him unless Jack Allister was hired and Amy Kittner was dropped. Well, the producer wouldn't hear that, so then the producer's wife went to the producer's backer, and... Well, this is the kind of gossip you had in mind that you wanted to know about, isn't it? Now, 
Now listen, Joan of Arc, before you burn me at the stake, all I want to know about is Kitty Lamson and Ray Pressfield, that's all. All right. Kitty Lamson. Ah, oh, Kitty Lamson's an actress, and like all other actresses, she's built her career on being benevolent to the right people. Now, she has an A-list, a B-list, and a C-list. Baby, shall I slip my yeah, throat? You go out with the A-list once a week, the B-list once a month, honey, and the... Honey, honey, listen, obviously I've offended you, but I, I really wasn't aware of it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Adam, do you know how long we saw each other yesterday? Ten minutes. The day before? Mm, we had a sandwich. Do you know how long I've waited for this lunch date with you? Three weeks. Three weeks to sit here for a couple of hours. And all the time we've been sitting here, you've been working, haven't you? And you walk into the apartment and you take three and a half seconds to kiss me on the cheek. And then you begin to question me about the gossip of the Rialto, as it is sometimes laughingly called by people who don't know any better. You didn't want a lunch day. You want an informant. Well, I'm not an informant, Adam. I'm an actress. And I'm a girl. And when you get that through your head, please call me, because I won't call you. Libby. Now, please stay there. I'm not going to make a scene. Hi, Libby. Waiter. Waiter. Check, please. I understand you have some questions about the personal side of show business. Oh. You ask the questions. I've got the answers. All of them. Emma. You've played this scene so many times professionally. Can you forgive me, Emma? Two, scene three. <laughs> Your publicity is showing. I only know what I read in the papers. <laughs> read these. You're probably featured. <laughs> now let us see. Are you going to divorce me? I don't know. Defend yourself. Tell me why I shouldn't. Because I... I, I need you, Emma. Because you need me? Or because you need a public figure of... of a loyal helpmate standing by your man? I need you, Emma. How would you know, Ray? Do you know what I think? You're a laminated man. And I married the outside layer. That's what I loved. The layer of a man. And then one by one, the layers peeled off. And underneath of another layer, like an onion. Just layer after layer with no core at all. All right, honey, I beg you to forgive me, honey. I beg you to forgive me. That's good. That's good, Ray. Pressfield residence. Well, who have we got there, Mr. Fleers? Kitty Lamson, Mr. Fleers. You go get that boss of yours and tell him I want to talk to him. I guess he's not here right now. Oh, he's there. He's there, all right. You get him on the phone now. Tell him I'm going to make real trouble if you don't. Go on, I'm waiting. Get him on this phone. Maybe he just came in. I'll go see. Yes, you do that, Mr. Fleers. You do that little thing. Oh, 
What is it, Kennedy? It's a phone call. It's for Mr. Pressfield. Uh, I don't want to talk to anybody right now. It's Miss Lamson on the phone. I don't want to talk to her. Honey, I swear I don't want to talk to her. Miss Lamson, this is Mrs. Pressfield. How can I help you? You're not serious. You're really not serious. You get that husband of yours on this phone. You tell him I'm going to be indicted, you hear me? Now, come on. I'm scared, Mrs. Pressfield. Get him on this phone. Miss Lamson, I want you to leave him alone. I didn't start this. I didn't go after him. Whatever you did or did not do, Miss Lampson, whatever was true or was not true in the past, Miss Lampson, my husband did not make this phone call. You did. My husband is not chasing you at the present time. Please leave him alone. You hang up on me. What do you want, Miss Lampson? I want to talk to your husband, I told you. Will you see me instead? Will I what? Will you see me instead? Will I see you instead? Are you free this afternoon? Yes. In an hour or an hour and a half. I'll be here when you get here. I'll need the car in an hour, Cappy. Yes, ma'am. You ought to get some more sleep. You look very tired. Well, that's a, that's a good idea. Now, here's, here's what Froken's secretary says about him. Quote, the man was a saint. Nobody who ever knew him could have a bad word to say against him. He used to get his own lunch sent up from the same delicatessen for over 30 years. The counter man at the delicatessen store feel the same way about Froken as the others do. Uh, Shoeshine fellow says nice things about him. Okay. They turn up anything on the shelter? Well, I went to the garage where the press fields keep their car. Everybody knows Fleers. At the garage. At the garage, they said Fleers is a good mechanic, a nice man, a man who minds his own business. He's honest. Now, honest. That was a word that was used a lot to describe him. They point to anything specific? Well, uh, yeah. The night manager at the garage tells me that one night Fleers clips in close and wrinkles somebody's fender. Nobody sees it. Fleers leaves a note. Pays for it out of his own pay, even though the car owner said the car had insurance. What's his attitude towards his boss? Well, nobody ever remembers him calling Pressfield anything except Mr. Pressfield. Very formal, very polite. Brings Pressfield home drunk a lot of the times, but doesn't get personal, you know? You got any line on whether Flares could lie to cover up for Pressfield? My. Who knows what goes on in a guy's head? Fleers is honest. He is also loyal. Whichever comes first in his book is all in his own head, no place else. Well, you 
got our undivided attention. I want to show you something, Mike. Something very important. This is where we really should have started. A loves B. B loves C. C works for A. But A hates C. So C takes his money out of the show. Now, who do you think buys it? D buys it. And then he divorces A. Are you getting enough sleep? Enough sleep? I've been having my ear pounded for the past two hours about the lives, the loves, the hates, the ambitions, and the shenanigans of Mr. Ray Pressfield and Miss Kitty Lampson. Oh, and 208 of their friends and enemies. And I'm tired and I'm disgusted. And you had a fight with Libby. And I've had a fight with Libby. Well? Well, what? Well, go on with your report. I just want to call and tell you I was wrong, and I apologize. I'll call you back just as soon as I get over being sore about it. bodyguard. Don't you know I'm more scared of you than you ever were of me? Don't you know that? Never occurred to me that anyone would be frightened of me. Why not? You're defending a hearth and a home. What am I defending? A sense of guilt. I have a sense of guilt, you know. Brogan was right. I didn't need Ray. I took him because he was there. <laughs> he didn't know what hit him. I don't like him. You know that? But then I don't like myself either. Tell the truth. You. I don't want your husband. I just called him to get him to call off his dog. I'm going to be indicted for murder. Did you know that? But there is no murder. Murder is something he invented. Who'd you do it for, Cappy? For him or for her? So you and your husband call off that dog. I'll leave your husband alone then. I'm a star, madam. Everything I have, I made myself. When I walk down the street, people ask me for my autograph. I spend my money faster than I can make it. I have a home, but it's a place to eat and sleep. I'm a star, madam. And I waste my time with imitation men like your husband! I'm a star, and everything I have I made myself. And you have no right to take it away from me! You want to trade places with me? You want to go to sleep with sleeping pills? Wake up with wake up pills? Reduce with dieting pills? Calm your nerves with tranquilizers? Your husband is a lousy actor!
What happened to Danny Froken? No, ma'am. Oh, I beg you to tell me the truth. She didn't push him. Her hands never touched him. It was her contempt that did it. Mr. Froken just stood there, being insulted. She was making fun of him. His heart gave out, fell down the stairs. Were there other girls beside Kitty Lamson? I don't think you have the right to ask me that question. There's no one else to ask. I'm just a chauffeur. I have to know. Mrs. Pressfield. Do you love Mr. Pressfield? Yes, I do. Then you have to love him the way that he is. And not some way that you want him to be. Will you take me home before you go to the police station, Kathy? It wasn't exactly a lie I told Mrs. Pressfield. She did push him, in a way. She pushed us all, my whole family. I just push back a little. Mr. Froken gave me this watch. We had a little game, Mr. Froken and me. When he came to rehearsal, I was waiting for Mr. Pressfield. I'd go like this. Then he'd take out his watch, make sure it was the same. He had a little pocket watch. He held it like this. I remember how his hands looked. Each time they seemed to shrink just a little. He was getting older. Just like my father before he died. Nobody liked my father, except Mr. Froken, maybe. Although my father was much taller than Mr. Froken. You know what I remember most about my father? When I was 17, I made $50. I went to Seneca to buy a suit of clothes. But first, I went to Bennett's bar and had a drink of whiskey. At 17? They served you liquor at 17? I was big for my age. It, next thing I knew, I was in Bennett's poker game in the back room. I lost the $50. When I came home that night, I had to tell Papa. He didn't fault me. Just sat there. Then he said, Benner's game is crooked, son. Yes, sir, I said. I know that now. Then he said, tomorrow, you go and get back that money. <laughs> Peter almost beat me half to death before I got my money back. I came dragging back home, supper time. 
laid the fifty dollars on the table. Papa didn't say nothing at first. Just looked at me a long time. Then he said, For what we have just received, O oh Lord, we thank thee. My father was a man that lighted up with truth. Just like Mr. Froken. She didn't kill Mr. Froken. I lied. Are you saying this to your own free will, Cappy? I told a lie for the first time since I was born. I told a lie. I wanted to hurt her. Truth cuts through everything, doesn't it? Eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them. Green Gems film presentation from Columbia Pictures. Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.